Hey, what's going on? It's Strange and welcome to another YouTube music production video. My mission is to help you succeed in making music. So I've been hearing a lot of talk about this synth called Faceplant, and I finally got myself a copy thanks to the guys at Kilohertz. And I've been playing around the synth, I'm still learning it, I'm still learning the interface. However, I'm enjoying it, and I thought I'd do a demo creating a re-sound for 2020. Now comment down below if you have Faceplant. Let me know what you think of the synth. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more of it, make sure you hit the subscribe button and also share it. It'll help my channel grow. If we can get it up to a thousand likes, then I'll give you guys the project for free. And make sure you stay to the end of the video. We're going to duke it out against Serum, Pigments, and Massive X. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so here's the interface of Faceplant. It's got a nice and clean interface, which is what I like about it. Now, the main section of the synth is here. It's called Generators. This is where the sound is created. Now, a generator, it could be anything from an analog source to a noise sampler or wavetable. Now, they've also included a distortion and filter effect directly in the generator section. So this is where the main power of the synth lies. Now, what's crazy about Faceplant is that you can have 32 individual generators. And each generator could have a unison mode of up to eight. So essentially, you could have a synth that has 256 voices. So that's a pretty crazy synth sound, if you can imagine that. Now, I just want to mention that FM synthesis is also possible through this synth. And I can only imagine the crazy results you can get with the number of generators you can patch through FM synthesis. And we'll do a video where we dive into FM synthesis with Faceplant in the future. So to add a generator, you just click on this grayed out box here, and then you can choose from a number of different generators as we mentioned. And I'm going to choose analog. Now over here, you can change the waveform from basic analog waveform. So we have a sawtooth here. Square, triangle, and sign. Now since we're making a resound, I'm going to stick to the sawtooth. Now to create that resound, we need to increase the unison mode, which duplicates the waveforms a number of times. Now I found four works great for the resound I want to make, which is a re kind of like conflicts messiah. However, you could increase it more if you like. It just will change the texture of the sound. The more, the fatter the sound. Now let's adjust the detune which spreads the pitch of each waveform in unison mode. I found that 75 cents works the best. It makes it nice and wide without any crazy phasing. Now Faceplant allows up to three FX chains. It's found on the right here. They're called lanes. So you have lane one, two, and three. And what's awesome about the generator section is you can set multiple outs sending one output per effect so then you can have a parallel effects chain so i have one output here and currently it's being sent to lane one now i'm going to create an additional one by clicking output here and then i'll send it to lane two so now i can have one dedicated to the base frequencies and lane two can be dedicated to the mids where we can add some distortion and filtering. Now I'm just gonna disable output two for now so we can focus on output one. Now let's add an effect on lane one. So I click on the box here and I'm gonna choose distortion to drive the signal a bit and I'm gonna increase the drive. Now I'm gonna add a filter next and we're gonna be using a low pass to filter at that high end. So at around 110 hertz. Now you can adjust the slope of the filter, which determines how sharp it falls off. It's equivalent to Serum's different poles for their filters. So I'm gonna choose four. Essentially it just makes the filter sound a bit more cleaner. 
Okay, so now I'm going to disable output 1 and then I'm going to enable output 2 over here. And remember, it's currently being sent to lane 2, which is over here. Now lane 2, I'm going to use a filter and it's going to be a high pass this time. So I'm removing the lows. And since our crossover frequency is about 100, 10 will set our frequency there as well. And you can adjust the slope as well. Now we're going to be adding an additional filter here. Now this filter will be set to the peak mode, which is this mode here. Now we're going to be using this second filter to automate the cutoff in a MIDI clip. And this allows for a more dynamic and moving resound. So I'm going to adjust the slope to four. Just gives a sharper filter sound. And I'm going to really boost the frequency here. So I'm going to bring that up to around 10 dB. And we want the resonance to be pretty wide to cover a wider range of frequencies. So we're going to dial it back down here. But 0.4 works. So during our sequence, we're going to be moving this cutoff. Finally, we're going to be adding a layer of distortion to really bring out the angriness in the Reese. And I'm going to bring up the drive to around 10 to 12 dB to really crush that signal. Now we can play with the dynamics parameter which preserves the shape of your sound. I just found it brought out a nice quality in the Reese. Now the bias parameter adds a DC offset to your sound and in layman terms it shifts the center point of your sound source. So essentially it brings out some nice harmonics when it's distorted. So we'll bring it up there around 74. Now we can adjust the spread that just increases some stereo width on the sound. Just a little bit about 12-14% is good. Now hover down here on the bottom where it says glide. We're going to introduce some glide between the low and high notes. Now you're going to have to adjust the glide time here. I find around 200 milliseconds works. Now let's re-enable output 1 so we can bring back the bass frequencies. Okay, so our Reese is coming along and now we're going to add some additional effects to really bring out that Reese. So I'm going to bring out the EQ and I'm just going to duck some of those low mids which are unnecessary, so around 200 hertz. And then we'll bring up some of those angrier mids. So around 1200 to 2000 hertz. I'm just going to make it wider by adjusting the Q and then bring down the gain. Okay, that's sounding good. Now I'm going to add some additional saturation to really bring out that angriness in the Reese and we'll drive it a bit. Rough 3 dB works. And then we can adjust the bass which determines how we distort those lower frequencies. Okay, and finally we're going to add an effect called erosion. Now this adds some noise to the Reese and makes it sound a bit angrier. Now increase the width of this erosion and we're going to be using the wide noise setting. I find right there sounds good to me, but you can choose what sounds good to you. Now just bring down the mount just a bit. Now to create some movement and make that Reese sound like it's talking, we're going to have to automate the cutoff filter. Bringing back 
face plant here, notice there's a number of macro knobs on the top here. These macro knobs can be assigned to any of the parameters in face plant. So click on the orange plus button and then we're in mapping mode for macro one. And over here on the second filter on lane two, we're gonna click on the plus sign and drag up. So that means we're assigning the cutoff to macro one and we're increasing the automation amount to 100%. Okay, and then just click anywhere else to get out of the mapping mode. Now going outside of face plant, just make sure that you have macro one available. If not, just click on the configure button here and then click on the macro knob and then you should see macro one here available for modulation. Now right click on macro one and then choose show automation. And now we can automate the macro one parameter using this line here. Now what I'm gonna do is set the frequency to move up on the higher notes. And maybe lower on those lower notes. Perhaps we can drive it, move it up like this. So on that first note, it slides up and then we play this higher note. And we can add a slide down and maybe this one we can play up here. So I'll let you guys play around with how you want to articulate that filter, but the key is creating some movement as the Reese plays out. Now, what I like about the results with face plant is that there's a silky texture to the Reese. It just sounds very Reese-y for a lack of better terms. <laughs> Okay, so now that we created our Reese, let's do a comparison and go head to head with Serum, Pigments, and Mass Effects. And let me know what you guys think sounds best. So I have this four bar melody here and here's Faceplant. <laughs> And here's Serum. And here's Pigments. And here's Massive X. So let me know in the comments which one sounds best to you. Personally, I think they all have unique characteristics and it's up to a personal preference. They all have a different kind of tonality to it. I'm thinking face plant sounds the raciest in my opinion, but let me know what you guys think. So I hope you guys found this informative and I hope it helped you get an idea of how Faceplant sounds. I'm still learning and growing with the synth, but I do think it's a nice addition to the studio. It seems like a fun synth to play with, especially having a maximum of 32 oscillators and a possibility of FM synthesis. I can only imagine the crazy results you could get. And I look forward to creating more videos where we can dive into Faceplant a little bit more. Then again, if you guys are new to synthesis, and you already have a synth, I would recommend sticking with it and really learn that synth, learn all the parameters and push it to the max before moving on to another synth. Because once you've learned a synth inside out, it's easy to then learn another synth. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you did, make sure you hit the like, subscribe and share buttons. And that's pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks again for watching. Keep practicing and I'll see you at the next video.